Hey guys, so today we're going to be covering the basics of underwriting and more specifically the Dutch auction procedure. But before we begin, I think it's really good to take a step back and to see how underwriting fits into the overall structure of the stock market. The stock market can be divided into four different types of markets. The primary market, the secondary, the third, and the fourth market. The primary market is where newly issued securities are sold to investors. This is where IPOs and SEOs usually fit in. And this is where underwriting is done. It is done in the primary market. The secondary market is the market in which previously issued securities trade among investors. So say, for example, you want to log on to your brokerage account and purchase shares in Ford. You buying those shares is operating in the secondary market. Those shares have already been issued to investors and now are being traded among investors. So you're operating in the secondary market. The third market is an off-exchange market for securities listed on an organized exchange. And the fourth market is a market for exchange-listed securities in which investors trade directly with each other, usually through electronic means. The third and fourth market won't be talked about in this, in this uh, video, but the primary market is really where underwriting uh, happens. So selling securities to the public can be done in two forms. So in the primary market, there can be an IPO, an initial public offering, where a company offers stock for sale to the public for the first time, or a seasoned equity offering, where the sale of additional shares of stock by a company whose shares are already traded. So say for example, Ford wanted to return to the public market and raise more funds by offering more shares, they would be conducting a seasoned equity offering. Now, for an initial public offering, a lot of students are already familiar with this. It's been covered in many financial movies like The Wolf of Wall Street. But essentially, if a new company wants to enter the public market, they would conduct an initial public offering to really get their shares into the public market. So bringing the IPO and SEOs under the primary market, this is essentially how the stock market would look. And so once again, the underwriting procedures are conducted in the primary market, and they are supporting, they are services that support the IPO and SEO procedures. So what does underwriting mean? Well, to underwrite means to assume the risk of buying newly issued securities from a company and reselling them to investors. So, so usually an investment bank would be hired by a company to purchase those shares that are being offered to the market and then use their expertise, their institutional relationships to then sell them to the market. The underwriting spread is the compensation that this in underwriter, the investment bank, would take by, by the difference between the underwriter's buying price and offering price. So say, for example, the underwriter purchases the shares from ABC Corp for $10 a share, and they offer the shares to the market for $12 a share. The $2 per share difference is the underwriter spread. In addition, the syndicate is usually now in the current market with all the regulatory changes and the requirements for financial bank backing. A syndicate is a group of underwriters formed to share the risk and to help sell an issue. So when a company wants to go to the market, whether it's through an IPO or SEO, usually they hire a syndicate of, uh, of investment banks rather than just one in order to really diversify that risk and e extend the network of relationships to investors. So there are three types of underwriting procedures. Firm commitment underwriting is where the underwriter buys the entire issue, assuming full financial responsibility for any unsold shares. So this means that an investment bank would buy all the shares offered by this respective company, and they would take full responsibility in making sure that all those shares get to the investors. Whether they do or not is the risk that comes with firm commitment. The best efforts underwriting is when an underwriter sells as much of the issue as possible, but can return any unsold shares to the issuer without financial responsibility. So say for example, a company wanted to sell 400 shares and the investment bank was only able to sell 300. The remaining 100 shares would be returned to the issuer without any financial penalty. So the best efforts underwriting procedure is usually favored by uh, the investment banks. The Dutch auction underwriting procedure is a more new procedure that has emerged in the past, I would say, decade. And so it's a type of underwriting in which the offer price is set based on a competitive bid by investors. And so the Dutch auction procedure has really become popular because not only does it work for investment banks, but it works for companies because with this competitive bidding, you're able to really increase the offering price and really max out the value of your offering. So 
to really understand this, let's take a look at an example. So ABC Corp wants to sell 400 shares to the public. The company receives five bids as follows. So bidders A through E have bid the number of quantity, the quantity of shares that they want at the price they are willing to pay. Now, the Dutch auction encourages companies to bid aggressively by providing some protection against bidding a price that is too high. So you can see that there are different levels of aggression. So bidder A really wants to own shares in ABC Corp. So for 100 shares, they're willing to pay $16, whereas bidder E would buy 200 shares at only $10. So again, that Dutch auction shifts the decision of the investment bank because usually investment banks would decide what the offering price is by conducting valuations and talking with the company. But now they've really turned the tables and are asking the market, how much would you pay for this uh, for these shares? And after receiving all of these bids, they would work through those bids. So they would start at the highest price and move through the bids until supply is filled. So they start at $16 a share. Now, if the supply is 400 shares, that's how much ABC is offering. At $16 a share, only bidder A would buy those shares and they would only buy 100. So the investment bank would then move to a lower price level. At $14 a share, bidder B would also buy 100 shares. So now there's demand of 200, but there's supply of 400. So the investment bank needs to go even lower. At bidder C, the bidder C wants to pay uh, pay $12 for 200 shares. And so looking at these three bidders, that would meet the entire supply that is provided by ABC Corp. Therefore, we can confirm that supply is filled at a competitive price of $12 a share. Therefore, the cutoff price for the offering is decided at $12 a share based on the different types of bids. But before we move on, it's really important to identify that bidder D has also bid for 100 shares at a price of $12. So the company can't really pick and choose who gets it. So at, when demand exceeds supply, they need to employ an allocation strategy. And so you can actually simply calculate an allocation ratio by dividing the supply of shares by the demand for shares to get an allocation ratio and then multiply that allocation ratio by the quantity of shares demanded by each bidder that meets the competitive cutoff price to determine the number of shares that need to be allocated to all four of these bidders to meet the 400 uh, supply of shares. And so in this case, uh, bidders A through D would fall under the $12 price level. And with an allocation ratio of 0 0.8, bidders A, B, and D would receive 80 shares, and bidder C would receive 160. So none of them actually received the number of shares that they demanded because, again, demand has exceeded supply, and now the, the investment bank must evenly allocate the number of shares offered based on the allocation ratio. So an overview, and the most important point is a top point. So all winning bidders will pay the lowest winning bid. And so this is the baked in protection when we talk about, you know, why the Dutch auction encourages aggressive bidding. So looking back here, we can see that bidder A actually bid $16 a share, but they will be paying the $12 cutoff. So it doesn't matter if they really aggressively, they could have bid $100 a share. If no one else was willing to bid $100 a share, then the next lowest price would be here. And then so on and so on until we meet our cutoff. And the cutoff price is what bidders A, B, C, and D are all paying. So that's really important. So all winning bidders will pay the lowest winning bid. As we talked about with the allocation ratio, if demand exceeds supply, the allocation ratio is calculated and applied to all bids to evenly distribute shares. So companies and investment banks can't take prefer preferences legally. They can't prefer like uh, go to one company and be like, look, we're going to give you all of, of the, the, the supply of shares that you demanded. They can't do that. They need to evenly allocate it to all of the bidders that met the comp competitive cutoff price. And then when you think about why a Dutch auction procedure is used, well, a Dutch auction procedure works well for popular companies. Excess demand increases the offering price. 
So when companies are going to the market, they their incentive is to get as much money as they can based on the numbers of shares that they are you know offering up, right? And so the Dutch auction procedure is the best way to reflect that that demand for their shares. On the other hand, say for example, it's an unpopular company and supply exceeds demand, then the Dutch auction un underwriting procedure will work against them because then the lower lowest price may be significantly lower than they could have received in the in the best efforts offering. So the Dutch auction procedure works incredibly well for popular companies. And so we saw that with Google, now Al Alphabet, and several other companies who have attempted to use this procedure to really max out the value of their shares. Now for the bonus question for today, we're going to be looking at this example. So if ABC Corp is selling 800 shares in the open market through a Dutch auction uh, underwriting procedure, what is the winning bid price based on the following received bids? So we have bids A through G, their quantities and their price prices offered. So similar to the example that we did in the previous slides, you need to find the cutoff price at which the supply of 800 shares offered by ABC Corp is met by the demand uh, in these competitive bids. So please share your winning bid price, the answer to this question in the comments section. And please also like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. Thank you so much.